Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. Whether you're a technology pro looking to master the Kusto query language or new to the world of IT and looking to learn your first language, 10 Minute KQL is a place to level up your skills. This is the ninth session in the Kusto query language beginner series. This series is intended to take you from a level with minimal technical experience to writing your first basic queries using the KQL language. These short 10 minute sessions will teach you KQL, allow you to get hands-on practice in a lab environment, and provide some homework to practice after the session. In the last session, we discussed how to use Boolean operators, limit and top. In today's session, we'll learn how to work with time values. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you wanna receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. Today we're using the Log Analytics demo environment. If you need access to this free environment in order to practice KQL, reference the instructions in Lesson 7 of the KQL Beginner Series. Much of the data we use to answer questions about KQL are from logs. Oftentimes, logs are associated with a timestamp, and they directly correlate to an activity. Being able to work with time values in KQL queries is important, and it's a useful filtering tool to help get just the information you need. So far in all the queries we've shown previously in the series, we've used the default time values set in the graphical interface. This is an additional filter on the query in the same way that a where statement would be a filter. One option to define the time span the query output will contain is to click the time range section and select one of the predefined time options. If you want to create a custom time range using the GUI, you can click custom and select the start and end dates and times then click Apply. While this works fine in the short term, it's generally better to define the time range filter in your query. So if it's shared or recalled later, there's no need to interact with the GUI to get the desired results. When you define the time frame from inside the query, it automatically overrides any GUI settings for time. It's common to place time filters before where statements and after table names in your query. Since it reduces the query early, and uses less resources to process. When we want the results to display from a point in time to the present time, we can use the ago function. To use ago, it's common to start with a where statement and reference the field that measures the time value in the table. Today we're working in a log analytics workspace, and it's common to see the time generated field mark the timestamp. In other Microsoft products, you may see this field named timestamp or other field names, so it's always best to take 10 records in the data set to see the proper field name. In this example, we want to see sign-in logs for the last day. We place a greater than and equal to sign, then type a go. We must place parentheses after a go and identify the time span to go back. We can use D for day, H for hour, M for minute, or S for second. There are more time value options like millisecond and nanosecond, but these aren't very commonly used. Keep in mind if we want to see logs for the last year, we would type in 365D, since there are no unique time indicators for both month and year. In this example, we've indicated that we want to see sign-in logs from the last 10 days. When using a go, it may seem confusing which direction the greater than or less than symbol should point. In this case, think about the value in the ago parentheses as a marker in time. From that marker in time 10 days ago, you want to see timestamps greater than that marker. In this case, greater than means newer. In the second example, we want to see sign-in logs that are older than four hours ago. So we switch the symbol from greater than to less than. You can think of it as the time marker of four hours ago. We want to see timestamps less than that. In this case, less than means older. Another new KQL term for time values is between. If you want to see records in your output data set starting at one date time group and ending at another date time group, you can use between. The KQL language accepts many forms of date time groups. This ISO chart shows a few of those. In our examples, we're only demonstrating a few of the available options, but there are many to choose from based on your preference. When you use between, pay attention to the parentheses around all of the consolidated date times, as well as the second set of parentheses around each individual date time. 
The double periods in between the date times are needed to separate the start and stop periods. When using the date time data type, quotes are not needed. If you decide to only place the dates with no time values, the time defaults to midnight of the beginning of that day. In this example, it may look at first glance that this would produce results from the beginning of the third to the end of the fourth, but it's deceiving. It will only produce records from the beginning of the third to the beginning of the fourth. When we sort this query by time, you can see that the latest or oldest records are just before midnight on the third. You can also choose to only place the time with no date. And in that case, the default will be today's date. We talked about a go in between, and now we'll talk about a new term called now. In this case, I want to see all records from the third until the current date time. If you're using now in this way, remember to place the empty parentheses so the function will work. It's also important to ensure the earliest date time is on the left and the latest date time is on the right. If they're reversed, the query will fail to produce the desired results. In this example, we want to see all records from the beginning of the third to four hours before the current time. Remember that times are in Universal Coordinated Time, or UTC, also known as Zulu Time. If you need to convert to local time or back to UTC, you can also define that. But usually queries are best kept in UTC time. Let's do a practical example that ties together many skills we've learned from the previous sessions. In this example, we'll try to find all the processes running on a particular VM called AppArcWin in the last week when the destination port is 80. The first thing we have to work through is which data set to choose from. One way to do this is to look at the high-level categories. Since we're focusing on VMs, let's have a look at the Azure Monitor for VMs section and see what tables are available. We see several possible options. Since one of the pieces of information we're trying to find is the process information, let's have a look at the VM process table to see if it contains anything we need. A second parameter we're looking for is the port number of 80. As we scan through the fields, we see that ports are not part of this table. Let's have a look in the VM connection table, since it may have information on ports. As we take a sample, we see it has the computer name, process name, and destination port, which meets all of our criteria. Let's start to build our query. After the table, our first filter is the time value. In this case, it's one week. Since days are a time option, but weeks are not a time option, we'll use 7D. The next condition is the destination port. We could either add an extra where statement or use AND. I'll choose AND in this case. The next filter parameter is the computer name of AppArcWin. We can use another AND line here for the third filter. If we run the query at this point, we can look at the results and see we're looking pretty good with our output. The last requirement is to identify all of the unique processes run in the last week. For this, we can use distinct. In the intermediate series, we'll show ways to summarize the data to add additional context, but for now, distinct will work well. We can see the output gives us the exact parameters that we asked for. If this is associated with an investigation, it's best practice to place both the results and the original query used to get the results in the case notes as evidence. By placing the query in the evidence, it can be examined by others to ensure the logic of the query is sound. For homework, use the Log Analytics demo environment with the perf table. Find all of the bytes sent in the counter name field that have a counter value of over 10,000 for the last three days. Order the results by counter value with the highest numbers displayed first. That's it for today's session. In the next session, we'll discuss both the search and get schema operators. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.